finger extensors, finger extensors. Boom, boom, boom. Welcome back to the Seek Stand Office of, of Public Administration. Today we want to talk about a gentle public service reminder about you should plan your year ahead or plan it as best as possible. Or God forbid you'd have at least some kind of plan for the year. So don't just have a nebulous goal of, you know, I'm going to be better at wave thing or I want to be super jacked you know have an actual plan in regards to your programming in regards to your phases of training so we're going to talk about that a little today and go through some of the nuances that are previously did a one on how to set goals for a squat bench and deadlift but we're kind of talking about not how to set those goals and find those we're going to talk a little bit about why and how you should be programming the year ahead or at least blocking the year ahead into particular phases to make the most of the year ahead make sure you actually make some progress this year and not not make progress yeah I think w one of the things you definitely have to keep in mind is like previous timelines and previous patterns that you have right so this is that and nobody else will have I don't know how much you kind of waste time during the summer by going and hanging out in the evenings more or uh, whether you get more uh, adherent to programs in September or whether you tend to train really hard at certain times of year but you will know that you will know that if you spend 20 minutes just sitting down writing out how the last few years have, go have gone in terms of... Not great. <laughs> <laughs> Not great. Didn't achieve anything again. Uh, but you'll know if you're going to write out, okay, last spring, training was pretty good, but then the summer tended to uh, influence more or less, whatever it was. I know things will be a bit up in the air at the moment because of lockdowns or restrictions and all that. But hopefully you'll be able to plan uh, kind of a bit more freely this year and have a bit more uh, bit more access to training, bit more access to gyms and stuff like that. So when we're talking about timelines, what are we talking about here? What's a realistic timeline to set? Well, what I'd recommend doing is looking at your last at least two, but ideally four training cycles, right? So most of the time training cycle we're talking about somewhere between uh, eight and 16 weeks. So two and four months. What I'd like to do is I'd like to look at the time you've spent in each one. So say now, for example, you've run the road to anywhere squat program, you've run it twice, right? So that's eight weeks of squatting hard, eight weeks of maintenance, eight weeks of squatting hard, eight weeks of maintenance. Start looking at those timelines. Do you tend to take a certain amount of time just to get back in shape? Do you tend to work better if you take a longer taper or a shorter taper? Just be a small bit more introspective with this. Don't write it off as this kind of thing of, over the next three months, I'm gonna do a prep phase. You need to start looking into, okay, I know around six weeks of high volume work gets me in really good shape, or I know my squat kind of feels good once I do four to six weeks of eights and tens or whatever it is. They're the kind of timelines you need to look at. That's the data you already have, or you should be compiling over the next number of like, two or three years of training. So they're the kind of timelines you really wanna to look to when you put a plan in place for the next few months because people will just tend to block it up into spring summer autumn winter and then suddenly may april kind of we don't know where that transition is and are you going to change over now to strength or power base bias when you have been in a prep phase or do you need to spend quite so long in a prep phase or does that taper really need to come down in the next few weeks and a lot of time we just go by feel and say oh geez i feel great doing this training now i really enjoy it i'm going to keep going uh, whereas that can kind of severely limit your, your capacity to adapt long term. The second thing I'd say is with those patterns, with those habits, it's very much a learned process. So it's not that you can't change something. It's not that you can't, uh, you can't alter the fact that you become more adherent to training when it gets a bit darker outside in the autumn or you find it easier to go for a run when it's a bit warmer during the summer but they're very, very difficult to unlearn. So I would pay a lot of heed or creed to that of, if you know you've previously acted in these certain ways, try and take that into account with your your uh, scheduling of your training, with your different blocks. Don't just say, oh no, I'm really committed now, and I'll stop going to barbecues and going on the piss for the whole summer, and I really train hard for the whole summer. Uh, obviously you want to be moving in a positive direction the whole time, but you are you and don't change for anyone. 
So I think that's very important is literally just to actually sit down with a pen and paper or your electronic notebook or your tablet or your new laptop that your mom got you for Christmas to actually sit down and think about what it is you're going to do. So not only have we talked about, you know, setting, picking your goals and how to pick those goals, but really what we're talking about in this video is sit down and actually think about how you're going to get there or as best as you possibly can. Are you going to outsource that information? You know, if you look at, for example, Eleni Olympic athletes, the Russians talked about this in the 60s, 70s and 80s. They used to plan four year cycles or multiple year cycles for their elite national athletes. Now, the peak of your performance probably isn't going to be as high as these elite athletes, but you can still aim to make the same magnitudes of increase. You can still aim to make progress. So to do that, you really have to sit down and think about yourself as a system, all of the variables included in your life and things that might come up, the unknowns and the knowns and think about like Fit said, previous patterns but really sit down and look at this year. Now, you may get it wrong, and I'm gonna say you're probably definitely gonna get it wrong, but as the years go by, you can look back each year and a decade hence. If you do this for 10 years, you will have a monumental amount of information. Now, the best time to plant a tree was 20 years ago, but the next best time is today, maybe tomorrow even. So insightful. So insightful. So you need to actually sit down and start doing this action. It may not be perfect this year. You may not even be sure what you're doing this year, but the sooner you start in some kind of dedicated direction, you start recording variables and progression and the actions you've taken and you start planning it out now, even if you stick to a plan that's incorrect, at least you'll have knowledge of what doesn't work in particular. So we've eliminated some variables that we know don't work for you in particular. So really highly encourage you just to sit down and do this. And it might take a couple of days. It might take over a series of two, three, maybe two or three weeks might take a couple of days and days coming back to it. You might ruminate it on your subconscious and you might go, you know what, that's fucking dumb. I'm not going to be able to do that. So that brings you on to the next point and is be realistic. So Fitz, like we said, talked about setting realistic goals. But now you need to be realistic with your capacity to actually achieve these goals and do the actions you need to get to them. So rather than saying, I want to squat a bigger weight or squat 200 kilos, you need to look at, are you at 80 kilos right now? Now it's possible you could get to a 200 kilo squat, so don't focus too much on that. We could be talking about uh, qualifying for your national swimming team or winning a badminton match against your neighbors. This could be literally anything you want to do, but you need to look at what is your capacity to achieve these goals. You can't just sit down and say, I'm gonna squat, six times a week and I'm going to get that 200 kilo squat or I'm going to play badminton 14 times a week. I mean, you know, not only are you not going to physically do this through your psychological bitchness, but are you actually lacking the physical capability due to having real life work demands, poor nutrition, poor physical capacity up until now, not a long training history. So you need to go, do I have the requisite demands to get to this? Am I going to be patient enough to enact that very slow and methodical plan to get to that place you need to be. So not only do you need to look at how or what your goal is, but you need to look at how do you get there and do you have the capacity and the smarts to put yourself along this pathway to get there. So you can't go from squatting once a week to six times a week. You need to go through a period of training twice a week, for example, then you might need to go through a period of training three times a week, then you might need to go four times a week. So you need to be smart enough with this, but you need to be really realistic. You can't just go to say, okay, I'm squatting one times a week now, but by August, I'm gonna be squatting six times a week, and that's it. You need to go, okay, I'm gonna try this for two to four weeks. I'm gonna see how this goes, how I assess some metrics. Then after that, hopefully, and with reasonable attenuation, I should be getting to four times a week or something. Now, I'm not actually telling you to squat that many times, but it's a simple example to look at. So you need to be realistic with your capabilities and how they're actually going to play out. I'd almost say when it comes to planning your actual programming, I would undervalue and underball your capacities a little bit. So setting your actual goals can be a little bit different. So setting those, I know there's different stuff around that. Well, you might actually need to aim a little bit higher, uh, but still quite realistic. When it comes to your programming, I would almost certainly undervalue your ability, especially in the initial phases of training. So that initial couple of months or few weeks when you're starting off, if you're starting a new training block in your mind, you need to downplay your capacity. You need to take it easier than you possibly think. Because it's very easy to write stuff down on paper and write things down and you'll say, you know, I'm gonna be in great shape in four weeks at GPP, but it could actually take three months, you know? So you really need to write down what it is and underplay how much you're gonna do. You can always add more later. There is no rush with training. The training scales, we're talking about rushing things in the space of years. We often get caught up in the idea that one or two weeks is very important. Even six months isn't that hugely, it's not a massive part of training. Like it's literally, we're looking at things in decades here for performance. So downplaying your performance initially for a few weeks, 
will only benefit you in the long run. So you need to underplay these initial sessions, do less than you think you need to do and build into it slowly. That's probably one of the most important things. So be realistic with your capabilities, not only with your goals. The last thing I'd say is just be a small bit realistic with the, so with the plan, obviously in the, in the goal setting video, we talked about realistic goals and stuff. But what I'd really like for a lot of people to do is if you're if it's something like you're reaching out to myself and Owen or you're talking to your coach or talking to your training partner or talking to your dog about what you want to do this year, uh, just look at things that will actually make a difference to you, right? Everyone emails us and says, I want to squat 250 kilos. I want to snatch 140 kilos before I'm whatever. Uh, how good do you think my genetics are? Do you think I could do this? Are those goals really going to make a massive difference to you? Like the the day you do those things, you'll be really happy. The day you deadlift 250, the day you snatch 100 kilos, the day you squat 200 kilos, whatever it is, you'll be happy for half an hour. They'll, you'll be delighted. You might win a national championships with it. You'll be very, very happy for a day or two maybe. But inevitably, you'll go back to training and the training and the process of you achieving those numbers is really what you want to get to. If you can take one thing from this video, it's that there's nothing wrong with wanting to be in a small but better shape, have better health markers, be less out of breath when you walk up the stairs, uh, feel a little bit better when you wake up in the morning. These things will actually have a vastly uh, more meaningful effect on your life and you're kind of daily moving around in your meat vehicle, then any kind of 1RM number, 3RM number, any ranking on a national list, these are all things that as athletes we like to think about and they're important to set these goals and numbers for, but unless they're paying your wages or they're in a position where at some point in the very near future they could be paying your wages, you need to look outside of that remit and start filling in those goals with, with those kind of health numbers, those body composition numbers, do you want to look better? Will you be able to pull more girls or pull more guys if you look better? That's like my kind of finishing comment on this is that we always pick the numbers. The people who come to us always talk about the numbers. Dob double body weight squats, whatever, three times body weight squats. Uh, and that number is nice when you hit it. It's unbelievably uh, empowering when you hit it. But the training is where you live your life. You live your life in the process every single day. And if you can make these kind of meaningful changes through that process and achieve the numbers you want at the end of it, you're going to be much better off. Yeah, we want the best performance for you. Now, we don't really talk about health that much. It's not really a concern. But if that's one of your concerns, that should be one of your concerns, you know. And uh, just on one thing on that, and I know it's kind of a different video, but Zach made a video about this recently. You know, Monster Energy Sponsoring CrossFit. Uh, we often talk about extreme levels of performance don't really kind of gel well with extreme levels of health but at your guys levels most of you watching there's some i know there's some freaks out there so that's okay but for most of us and most of you watching your health can be a priority alongside your performance so don't be afraid to prioritize your health and don't be afraid to look better because it'll probably perform better because you know there's no reason not to be a little bit happier in your skin it's not a vain thing you're just human no. You know, we're all just basically peacocks, you know? Yeah. And there, there is like every weightlifter and every powerlifter will go through the phase and be like, no, I don't even care about that anymore. Yeah. This is about the numbers. Uh, obviously, it's about the numbers. It's the sport, your sport, your competitive outlet is the numbers. Would you rather look really jacked with the same numbers or would you not care and, and have the same I think numbers? I'd look really, I'd prefer to look really jacked. Who wouldn't say that? Yeah. You know? Yeah. So that there. I, the only person who'd say that is a lawyer. Who, like a solicitor. A liar. A, a liar. Uh, thanks very much for watching. If you do want help with kind of goal setting or that's something you might look into, you can organize a consultation with us. If you're a member of any of the programs, you're doing any of the programs, make sure you join the members page on Facebook and you get your two sessions a week of coaching there, all your video feedback, and we can help you with some goal setting in that kind of setting as well. If you want wondering about which programs you might need to run for the year of ours, you can just leave in the comments and we'll get back to you in the comments so other people can kind of benefit from that as well. Thanks. Pew, 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 pew. Actually, to help the algorithm, leave your goals for this year, whatever they may be and how you think oh, you're going to get to them. Oh, that'd be great. Yeah. Thanks, yeah. guys.